I think so because of the noise, everybody got scared and he did not put the slide over here. Well, uh, I'll just go uh, in brief of how I came up to this concept of uh, nice noise and stress concept. It so happened just about a few years back that I had a young 32-year-old male coming to me with stroke. And uh, he had uh, hypertension, his blood pressure was uh, 160, 90. And uh, at the time of admission, his blood pressure was somewhere around 180. And uh, he had an infarct. Fortunately, he recovered very well. And uh, it so happened that uh, I continued treating him. He was very responsible, taking medications regularly. And I told him to take a break. I did not ask him his profession or anything because of the busy schedule or that day, the way we were working at that time. And it so happened that uh, in one of our medical conferences, we had a, uh, had a program. And in that program, there was the most renowned DJ of our uh, uh, place, which was called in. And this person was the person who was actually operating the DJ. And uh, he used to complain that whenever I used to come back from this musical night and other things, I, used, I have palpitations, I am restless and uh, another two days goes, goes worst. So looking to the, the condition of this patient and how to do better, me and a few of my colleagues decided let, let us go through the clinical work which has been done. And it has turned out to be that there is a concept which has been established and we are aware of it and some of people are not aware and that is the noise stress concept. And this is my topic because there are certain needs for research also. The presentation I'll, I'll take care in these uh, particular uh, topics where I'll be going on the background of noise in our country, the impact which happens because of the dose response relationship for noise, the road traffic, the blood pressure, hypertension, the coronary artery disease and stroke, the risk evaluation process for this patient and what are the solutions and the needs for research and policy interventions for future prospects. So, Looking to the permissible noise limits in, in, in our uh, country, which has been laid down by the government, in the industrial area, the noise should be about 75 decibel during the daytime and 70 by night. Commercial areas around 10, 10 to 10 decibel less, and residential areas around 45 in the night and 55 in the daytime. Ludhiana being an industrial city and a commercial hub, there has been lots and lots of noise with the autos, with the rickshaws, with the music parties and dancers and the bus and apart from the dust and other pollution. So these things are increasing day by day. Now these are certain examples of decibels of how, how noise goes. That whispering is about 20 decibel and a peaceful landscape which we enjoy during the hills is somewhere around 30, in a quiet living room about 40 and in the suburbs it is 50. So this is what it should be between 40 to 50 and a normal conversation. We tend to happen to listen to music in our cars and the decibel goes up by 70 to 80. This is where we are actually increasing our own stress. The larger trucks, the jackhammer, the rock concert, this slowly it goes on and the, and the decibels for the aircraft takeoff and landing is somewhere around 120. Now, this turns out to be the city which has been reported as the maximum noise pollution globally. And the, this was the report which identifies 13 noise pollution cities in South Asia and five of these including Moradabad in Uttar Pradesh which turned out to be having an alarming noise level apart from Kolkata, Asansol, Jaipur and Delhi. So now let us look to the impact what this long term exposure of environmental noise is causing. The long term exposure is actually causing 12,000 premature deaths. It is contributing to around 48,000 new cases of ischemic heart disease every year in the European territory because research has been done there. About 22 million people suffer from chronic high annoyance. They are annoyed, restless. And 6.5 million people suffer from chronic high sleep disturbance. Now this is also one point which we see a lot of our diabetic patients, they do not have a regular sleep and because of the not having a regular sleep, their sugars get fluctuated. Now looking, looking to the cardiovascular effect of noise, the long term or short term environmental noise, it is causing a stress reaction or an annoyance reaction. Disturbance of sleep, there is also emotional reactions, cognitive reactions occurring in a patient. 
this is affecting the sympathetic and the endocrine systems, elevating the catecholamines, the cortisones, and resulting in lipid immetabolism, glucose immetabolism, and blood pressure regulation, as well as this is leading to an increased risk of cardiovascular illness. Now, this is the model which has been uh, uh, presented by uh, the International General where they say that the noise exposure has got a direct effect and an indirect effect. The direct effect is damaging to the hearing organs and leading to sleep disorders. The indirect effect is like performance, sleep, annoyance, cognitive, emotional reactions, and leading to anger, annoyance, disturbances. And ultimately looking to both leading to physiological stress reactions, the autonomic nervous system is activated, the sympathetic nervous system, the endocrine system, the adrenals. And coming to the risk factors of blood pressure, lipids, viscosity, blood coagulation, blood sugar, cardiac output, ultimately manifesting disorders like hypertension, CAD, heart failure, arrhythmia and stroke. Now, there has been a dose-response relationship for the noise and cardiovascular disease. With every rise of 5 to 10 decibel, the increase of cardiovascular risk goes about 10 to 15 percent. And this is the cardiovascular effect of the nocturnal noise because it disturbs the functioning of the endothelium. So the endothelium dysfunction shown by the flow-mediated dilatation demonstrates more oxidative stress. And, and this is how uh, things start deteriorating. Transport noise increases the maximum coronary risk. Exposure to both air pollution, transportation, this increases the maze. And they are synergistically increasing the cardiovascular risk and metabolism and increasing the arterial inflammation. The inflammation is the disease for the diabetes, inflammation is a disease for hypertension, and inflammation of disease combined together causing coronary artery disease. Now, there was a meta-analysis which was done. 24 cross-sectional studies in relationship was, was studied and it was seen like decreasing 10 decibel or if you say a person has a constant exposure of more than 10 decibel of uh, noise for 16 hours, he has a stronger affinity to develop more of hypertension and more of uh, the complications of this. So there is no direct evidence linking noise and coronary artery disease, but many studies have said and shown that noise and coronary heart disease like hypertension, they show an indirect relationship. And the meta-analysis of the four cohort and one case control has shown this type of association. Now, noise and stroke. Um, exposure to residential noise traffic was associated with a higher risk of stroke. And this was found when there were lots and lots of aircrafts landing in, in, in UK. And so ultimately in Heathrow Airport, they made it that they will not have any landings in the night. So that was the reason because lots and lots of population was getting disturbed because of this uh, noise pollution. And several studies within the last 10 years demonstrated a higher prevalence of annoyance, cardiovascular disease, or medication intake to persons exposed to aircraft noise. So these were the things which was taken by the UK government. They studied intensively and ultimately came to this conclusion. Now coming to the evaluation, like how do we evaluate the risk? First of all, we need to identify the hazard, what is causing the noise pollution, what is it comprising. Then the exposure assessment and the dose response assessment, like how can we decrease the dose and the exposure because working is also very important for a, for a person. Looking to the risk characterization and then coming to the management. Now, this is a chart which actually tells us for each day task noise, noise exposure, like if for every one hour we just add five decibels and the exposure from 79, which is the, which is the maximum limit, it starts going up. And as we add up the task, the total exposure keeps going up. And ultimately, if the exposure points or total exposure for the day turns out to be 280 points given a noise pollution exposure between 80 to 89 to 90, with just a slow or a small increase in the decibel size. So coming to the solutions. Solutions of noise reduction turns out to be by physically removing the hazard, that is the elimination, which is not possible in industries. Substitution, yes, that is possible, replacing the hazard. Engineering controls, isolate patients from those hazard, change the work, the way people work, and protective equipment which has to be provided. 
So the actions to reduce noise in this workplace for occupational hazard turns out to be the safety of the professionals who are working there. To, to purchase certain equipments which are quiet. Now I'll just give you an example. In our, in our uh, uh, lobbies or in our waiting areas, we have got certain fans. And when they are working, there are certain fans which are creating a lot of noise. And if you see, there is an arrogance coming out. And if you see, you also get disturbed by that constant noise. If you are sitting in a car, if you are sitting in an aircraft, if you are sitting somewhere and suddenly you start experiencing a noise which continuously keeps on going, the irritation bug starts happening and this is what happens. You start feeling that tachycardia and ultimately some of the other problem develops. When we are listening to some loud music or a DJ music, initially the dopamine receptors, they work very nice because you are enjoying it. But ultimately the adrenal and the corticosteroid receptors start working and you start having tachycardia and ultimately the next day you land up with other gastritis or palpitations or some sort of a dizziness in the mind. So we need to reduce the vibrations as and where possible, isolate the noise source in an isolated room and exclosure and place a barrier. These are the things which has to be educated to our people who are having these factories. Isolate the employee from the source in a room or booth these are the WHO guidelines which has been uh, given for noise. In, in a school or in a, in a playground outside, in a school it should be 30 decibels, in a playground 55, or a quiet living room should be 55, and in an industrial commercial area between 70 to 80. For certain ceremonies, festivals, and entertainment events, not, not more than 100, and the exposure should not be more than two hours and public addresses should be around 80 phones. And when we are using our headphones, we use it to a very higher level. So we need to reduce it because you, you need to control your problems. So these are the research needs which has been identified. Um, the researchers did not attempt where the study had taken to account for the demographic and socioeconomic or other health risk factors in their analysis. And this is the point where we need to research more. The, the second step is that source of transportation noise which has got a very great impact on the health, this has to be taken control because the vehicles are old, the roads are not very comfortable, there are so many things which are associated and our poor drivers and their co-workers are having a problem. Policy intervention right from the small level, from the talukar level to the state level to the central level has to come up to reduce individuals' exposure to transportation noise at home and even in urban areas, better enforcement of noise ordinances, infrastructure to block road noise, rules for air traffic, low noise tires for vehicles, and better insulation for buildings. These should be the policy interventions. So in summaries, many cities of our country have recorded higher levels of noise pollution apart from the air pollution which is visualized. Long-term exposure almost 12,000 premature deaths, contributing almost 48,000 new cases of ischemic heart disease, persistent and acute exposure to noise leading to development of cardiovascular risk factors, mental, psychological stress, a stressful population which is aging very fast. Further research is needed to tear apart the effects of this pollution which is alarming, which we are ignoring, and policy intervention to decrease and give us a safe environment. Thank you all for your patient listening.